Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we're going to be taking a look at this see-through 3D effect. So let's make a start on it. So for this project, I'm going to go with 1920, 1080, 24 frames a second and a duration of 10 seconds. So the first thing I want to do is construct a background. So I'm going to come into the library and scroll down to content. And I'm going to come down to the search bar here and I'm going to type marble. Let's set the scale to 200%. Let's open up the rotation and set the X rotation to negative 90 and the Y position to negative 100. This will work better once we've got our camera in position. The next thing I want to do is make a new group above this. So objects to new group. And I'm going to grab my text tool and I'm going to type my first line of text. So I'm going to type the word motion. Come over to format. Let's center align it. Properties, center that up. Let's come over here, increase the size to something like 300. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to appearance and I'm going to turn on 3D text. I'm going to turn off environment. I'm going to set this depth to 75. And I also want to come down here and where it says type, I want to switch that to matte. It'll just make life a little bit easier. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this text. So right click duplicate and come over to properties. And I'm going to set its blend mode to subtract. And immediately you can see we've actually got an outline. But what we're going to do is we're going to just do a very slight offset on the X and Y position. So negative two for X and negative two for Y. doesn't really matter which direction you go in either case, but now we've got a much more defined outline that's actually picking up the 3D nature of the source object. So I'm going to switch this group to 3D. We can do this by clicking on this switch here. And then let's actually add a camera. And actually, let's turn our background group to 3D as well. So now if we move the camera, let's just rotate it a little bit on X, we get a better sense of what's going on. So now when we didn't have our background, it kind of looked as though the text was see-through, but it actually, of course, isn't. And in order to make it see-through, we are going to add filters and masks and keying and luma keyer. And now you can see we've got the effect that we want. We could adjust the luma here, but actually I find for this purpose, the default is pretty good. If I wanted a little bit of the original 3D kind of shading, as it were, I could just dial back that mix value to something like sort of 70, 80%. But actually I'm gonna leave it full like that because I think that looks better. And then I'm also going to add a light. And now that's really starting to come together. So let's just turn off these annoying 3D overlays. No help to anybody. So then this is our motion text. Let's just rename that group so we know what's what. And there's one thing I want to do here just to make it easier if you wanted to change this up a bit. I'm going to select this upper layer of text, the motion copy, come over to the text format. And here I'm going to add a link to that text field there. So add parameter behavior link, and let's link it to the bottom layer of text. And so now you'll see that if we change this, both text layers update, just makes life a little bit easier. Okay, so then let's duplicate this text group. So right click duplicate, and let's call this tutorials, and let's come to properties, position, and let's set the Z position to something like 250. So it's sitting in front. And let's come back to our original and let's move it up on Y. So something like 100. And so now we've got this nice sort of parallax effect going on. So then we need to come into this tutorials group and let's select the bottom layer of text and let's change what that says. And what we want to do here is scale it down a little bit. So I'm going to select both of these text objects. So shift select that one. And let's just scroll in this size field until we get something that's working a little bit better. Let's maybe go for 250. So now if we move our camera around, 
you can see how well this effect is working. So obviously we can do all sorts of fun things with the camera. I'm just going to do something quite simple. Let's reset that Y rotation and let's come over to Behaviors, Camera and Sweep. And let's have a start of negative 30 and use that default end value. So now I actually want to group these two text layers and I'm going to come up and make a new group like that. And I'm going to put both of those into there. And let's just give it a little bit of color so we can come to color and levels. And let's come to red and reduce the red. Let's reduce the green a bit like so, that looks a bit nicer. And then we can also add to this group filters and glow and neon. Much too much to start off with. So let's just dial that back to something like 20. And it kind of just helps to give it a little bit more visual interest, I think. So let's come back to our light and let's set its position to say 50 on Y and zero on Z. And let's just increase its fall off quite a lot. So I really want it just to be eliminating a sort of very small pool like that. And I think that looks better. So we're at sort of like 13% there or something. Then I'm going to come back down to my marble here, add some color correction to it, levels. Again, let's just reduce the reds down to very little indeed and just pull some of the green out of it as well. Uh, not too much, something like that looks pretty good to me. So now we've got this sort of effect. Now I would urge you when you come to render it to switch the render quality to best uh, because it'll avoid some of the kind of ringing you get on the edges. But what you might also want to do is come to this group here, which has got both text elements in it and come to blur and Gaussian blur, drop that down below the levels and an amount of four is probably enough just to, again, just to sort of soften it off. Maybe pump it up to six if you're finding it a little bit too, too much. That's not looking too bad. It is going to kind of crawl a little bit, but that's just in the nature of the way motion renders, I'm afraid. So then the other thing we can do is make a reflection. So I'm going to rename this group as a main and then I'm going to duplicate it. So right click duplicate and come over to properties and I'm going to open up the scale, set the Y scale to negative 100. And then I'm going to set this opacity down to something like five. And you also need to move it down on Y. So let's just do that, something like that. It's entirely to taste. Let's actually go for negative 75. I think that's probably going to be quite good. So I've renamed that group as reflection. First thing I'm going to do is add a bit of blur to it. So blur and Gaussian blur. And I think we can probably go quite a long way. I think I'm going to try something like 64. And then I want to add an image mask to it. So it's not uniformly reflecting in the floor like that. So right click, add image mask. And I'm going to take this background group and add it to the mask source well. Turn the background group back on again. Set the source channel to luminance. And then I'm to this image mask, I'm going to add color and levels. And then I'm just going to bring the white in like that. So the white is a little bit stronger and then crush the black as well. So we're seeing it in these brighter bits of the marble, but not in the darker bits. I think we can go even further with that blur. So let's go for 128. And I think that just helps it makes it just not too reflective, but there's something happening there that just ties the whole scene together. So anyway, that's kind of basically it. You can do all sorts of fun stuff with the camera and, and so on. But just before we go, I want to point out that we can also do this with other things other than Motion's 3D text. So let's just turn off the reflection and the main here. And let's make a new group and from my assets folder, I'm going to bring in this thing called car gray, and I'll give you a link to that. So basically what this is, is the motion library car. But what I've done is I've stripped out the materials. So it's just gray. And let's come over to the unit size and select custom. And let's go for something like one, two, five. So now let's do the same 
trick as we did before. So we're going to select the car, we're going to duplicate it, we're going to come to properties, we're going to select subtract for the blend mode, and we're going to enter a small offset. So negative two on X, positive two on Y, for example. So now we're back to that kind of look, and you'll remember that what we need to do is we need to add masks and keying luma here. And now we've got a car that is see-through. Probably need to do a little bit more work here and we can add color and levels and we can just sort of crunch it a bit so we get more out of it like this. Actually just, just bring down the white, bring in the white like that. And then we get this sort of effect. And again, we can just add that, that uh, glow neon to it. Just to knock it back quite a bit. So let's go for 30 this time. And you can see how this could be pretty effective. We've got this sort of see-through car. You'll notice again, it's kind of ringing around all the edges and there's not a lot you can do about that. Uh, you can try blurring it, but it doesn't really work. It's just the f function of the way motion works, unfortunately. And uh, you just kind of have to live with that and fudge it a bit. But hopefully you've seen that this effect is actually really rather nice and it's got lots of potential to it. I should just point out the, the obvious that what we could do is we could fatten up the outline by increasing this offset. So let's go for something like negative six and positive six. And now we get a fatter outline like that. I and mean, it could just even go one way, you know, you, one of those values could be zero. And we could just have a really tiny outline. So that's just a, a Y offset of one. So again, a lot you can play with there. So I hope that was useful. Thanks very much indeed for watching. See you again another time.